Hello and welcome to the Street Crime Australia YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Today we look at the life of a notorious Australian criminal who will never be forgotten about in the Australian criminal underworld. Chow Hayes, otherwise known as Australian's first gangster. Frederick Chow Hayes was born in 1911. He grew up poor and without any significant male role models, similarly to many children from the war. Most children of his generation did not however grow up to become the most feared gunman and gangster in Australia. Chow Hayes was a brutal contradiction of a man. To those who feared him, he was a thug, a thief and a murderer. He quite literally bashed, stole and shot his way up to the top of Sydney's criminal underworld in the first half of the 20th century. At the same time, he was a product of his age and in some ways a gentleman but also a crook. All of his victims over the years, none of them were women or children and he never perpetrated sex crime. Hayes considered those who would harm or sexually abuse anyone who was weaker than them as a moral. An early formulative experience of Chow Hayes' life occurred when he was 12 years old. Mr. Hayes' father served in the iconic Light Horse Regiment in Europe during World War I and returned a broken man. Diagnosed with shell shock and shocking psychological wounds as a result of his time in service, Mr. Hayes' father was permanently committed to an insane asylum. Just visiting his father and seeing the crumpled, wasted man he had become, and after seeing him clearly being mistreated by hospital staff, Mr. Chow left the hospital in disgust. He is clearly moved by the experience, and from this point on, he never sees his father again. Mr. Hayes turned to crime early, without supervision as an adolescent. The streets of Sydney were rife with gangs, and easy money through the theft of booze was of course more appealing than pens, books and study. By the time Mr. Hayes was 18, he had been in and out of boys reformatories a number of times for misdemeanor offences. Mr. Hayes would later speak of his time in these homes as more of an education than a punishment. It was behind the walls of Gosford Boys Home that Mr. Chow received his PhD in crime. Chow Hayes was not a large man but his persona on the street quickly grew to large proportions. This was due to Mr. Hayes' policy to always be more violent than his enemies. Even as jail took him from and released him back onto the streets over the years, Mr. Hayes would always return to an old haunt and re-establish himself through a heinous act of violence as an alpha dog of the pack. Mr. Hayes' reputation was largely earned through his interaction with notorious razor gangs of the Sydney's King's Cross. The Razor Gangs were involved in prostitution and bootleg alcohol and as the name would suggest, carried knives and straight razors for their own protection and enforcement. Mr Hayes, always looking to get the drop on his opponents, would, on more than one occasion, embody the phrase, never take a knife to a gunfight, or in this case, a razor fight. The Razor Gangs stayed clear of Mr Hayes and his turf after having a Colt 45 pistol aimed at their head. Mr Hayes murdered rival Sydney criminal Edney Wayman in 1945. After a shootout some weeks earlier in which Mr Hayes had shot and wounded an associate of Mr Wayman's, the two were gunning for each other. In a radio interview in later life, Mr Hayes described this time as being similar to walking on eggshells. He wasn't going to let it go, but he knew I wasn't going to let it go. And trust me, I wasn't going to let it go. Mr Hayes knew that Mr Wayman would kill him on sight. So, in usual Mr Hayes fashion, he took the initiative and got the upper hand. A week after hiding, Mr Hayes climbed up the fire escape of the rickety Darlinghurst Terrace owned by Mr Wayman and found him lying on a bed. Mr Hayes coolly and calmly shot Mr Wayman five times and he died at the scene. Mr Hayes was an ingenious criminal and covered his tracks superbly. Witnesses were always hard to come by whenever Chow Hayes extracted his brand of carnage upon the people of Sydney. Such was his reputation for malice and bloodshed. Illustrates this most prominently and probably Mr Hayes most famous crime is the murder of former boxer Bobby Lee in King's Cross Bar in 1951. Mr Lee had been gunning for Chow Hayes for some time and had recently killed Mr Hayes nephew after mistaking him for the known gunman. This incensed Mr Hayes, who only had months ago been released from prison. One evening, Mr Hayes received a tip off that Bobby Lee was drinking with his friends in the Zigfield Club in King Street, Sydney. Mr Hayes steadily walked through the club. He had his 45 pistol drawn and upon sighting Mr Lee, he emptied the six round chamber into his victim. Mr Lee was hit in the thigh, 
chest, stomach and door ensued after. Perhaps the most remarkable thing about this crime is that it was committed in front of over 70 witnesses in the form of fellow club goers. Despite this fact, police could not find one witness who was willing to testify against Mr Hayes for the shooting. The struggle for a useful testimony would go on for so long that the case against Mr Hayes would experience two mistrials. Mr Hayes was eventually brought to trial for Mr Lee's murder in 1954. A victim of his own morals, Mr Hayes turned himself in and admitted to the crime to save his wife from jail. Mr Hayes' wife was known as Cleanskin, someone who steered clear of crime. But police had grown tired of their search for a witness against Mr Hayes and had decided to switch tactics. Mr Hayes' wife would therefore be brought to the trial in the murder of Mr Lee as an accessory before the fact. Mr Hayes cleared her name and was found guilty and was sentenced to hang for the murder. Ironically, two years later in 1956, the NSW government outlawed capital punishment, so Mr Hayes escaped the noose. His sentence was transferred to life in prison and he spent the majority of his time in Parramatta jail. It seems that Chow Hayes' notoriety extended to the world behind the bars as well. He was well known by fellow inmates and guards and received special treatment due to his status. He enjoyed illegal radio in his cell and was able to run a SP bookies practice under the nose of his captors. His cell had a unique lock and would be locked during the day when Mr Hayes was away working in the woodshop so that the wardens couldn't search his belongings. Mr Hayes often repaid this treatment with action. A story is told of a guard being bashed in a shower block only to have Mr Hayes come to his rescue and be knocked out unconscious. Mr Hayes was released from prison after almost 20 years due to being diagnosed with terminal cancer. He achieved a substantial fame after being subject to a book by David Hickey and was immortalised in the portrait in the 1991's Archibald Prize just a few months before his death. Thank you for joining us today. What are your opinion on the crimes committed by Chow Hayes, the man who will always be remembered as Australia's first gangster? Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like and share. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more Street Crime Australia content, then please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you can join us on the next video. Thank you for joining us and until next time, stay safe.